Hi everyone. Today I have Rick's Breckwell brand pellet stove controller on my test bench. Rick sent me this because he was having trouble powering the igniter that uh, ignites the flame in his fire. This controller has the capability to do that because it has a special relay on board and it has an electrical tab that you can connect the wire to to ignite the wire to ignite uh, to power the igniter. I've got that under the um, the uh, intensity switch and it's one that I have a brown wire connected to right now. So uh, when I power up the the tester, I should have uh, up to four lights come on. The first one is of course show, going to show the igniter. I've got the combustion fan simulator. I've got the auger motor simulator and I've got the convection room fan simulator on my uh, fixture. So I'll go ahead and power it up and uh, what should happen is I should get the combustion and the convection fans come on and then when I turn on the auger the auger and the igniter will come on so here we go uh, we'll go through the test routine here uh, so of course my combustion and the convection uh, motors are powered indicated by the light bulbs so a couple tests tests that I can do here one is I can power the auger motor manually and that is done through on a schematic through the orange wire or I can go to maximum intensity with the fan and you can see that the light went to bright there so I have that back to normal the other thing I can do real quick is uh, cycle through the positions on the switch the ABCDEF switch and you can see that the light intensity increases or decreases so now it's time to test both the igniter and the auger. <clears throat> auger in automatic mode. So I can do that by pressing the auger button. So because I've just powered this on, when I press the auger button, that'll start the timer timing for the auger to start cycling. It won't come on immediately, but it will in a little bit. And when I release the button, that should cause the igniter light to light up. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I'll press and hold and I'll release. So that lights up the green light over here and as we saw the uh, igniter came on. So it'll stay in this mode for about 10 minutes. I checked that out already. I'm not going to do that on this video but it'll stay on for 10 minutes. So we'll wait for the uh, auger to cycle on for once or twice here to show that it's working. There it is. So we had the green LED on the controller itself come on and at the same time the auger simulator did come on. So I'll, we'll go through that cycle one more time. It's fairly long on this one. There it is. And if I increase the uh, heat range to the maximum, that should cause the auger to run longer. Instead of a just a quick on, it sh it'll stay on longer, but it will still cycle. So let's wait for that. And there it is. We can see that the light is on longer and cycles off. So that's the changes that happens when I go to a different position. The other thing I'll note here is I've got my meter on 120 volts AC and it's basically telling me the same thing as what the, uh, the igniter is, is doing. So I've got the igniter on and I've got 120 volts showing. Now what I can quickly do as well is if I press the auger button one more time that will make the igniter lamp go off. So let's go for that. And there it shut it off. Now I cannot turn it back on again. I can press all I want and nothing will happen. The only way to make that happen is to turn the power off on the controller itself. Uh, wait a couple seconds like 10 seconds maybe for the board to discharge and then I should be able to restart the ignition cycle so let's do that I've got it off I'll wait a little bit you can see my voltage over here is pretty well at zero and my lights are off so if I turn it on let's see if I'm successful with that press release and there it is the igniter came back on so Rick I want to thank you for sending me your controller um, I'll be packaging it up and returning it to you very shortly. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.